We see headlines such as vegetarians have a higher risk of strokes or eat your butter. And then we go on YouTube and we check out videos such as vegan deterioration or vegan malnutrition. But is this actually true? Do vegans have a shorter or a longer lifespan? Do vegans live longer lives? In this video, we're going to be touching base on this exact question. So we're going to be looking at the actual data. We're going to be touching base on some studies that every vegan or soon to be vegan and frankly, every person should know of. So are you ready? Let's just dive right into it. Everyone has to, this friend's friend or, you know, a friend's of a friend's friend's uncle, sister, you know, brother, which is actually your friend's friend's uncle that, that I tried a veganist or vegan diet and it just wasn't for them. And that is just a super lame way of proving things. I think I don't need to touch base upon this here, but you know, these are anecdotes. These, these don't really prove a point. And the reason for that is that humans have a very bad ability to see a causal effect between things because there are multiple variables involved into, for example, longevity or the health of a person. We humans also tend to have a very subjective way of seeing the world. And the prime example for this topic is, you know, the case of Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs' death and, you know, diagnosis of pancreatic cancer really shook the world. Because Steve Jobs was this young guy, vegan, that took very good care of his health. And people were very quick to point and sputter and say, look, it doesn't do, it doesn't matter anything what you're doing with your health and fitness. And that is just simply not true. And John McDougall, in his very good lecture about the death of Steve Jobs, actually pointed out that the disease that Steve Jobs was suffering from, the pancreatic cancer, was not due to his nutrition. His nutrition actually helped, but more to toxic metal exposure as a teenager. Jobs could have been cured. Excuse me. Jobs couldn't have been cured. This cancer had been going on for 24 years. He foolishly pursued diet as an answer. I don't think so. That's one of the few things that didn't hurt him that they did to him. So in short, our brains are very bad at critically analyzing a situation, seeing cause and effect relationships between things and therefore making a sound decision. So what can we do in that case? We look at data, we look at studies, we look at science. Specifically, there are three studies worth knowing if you're a vegan or if you're thinking about following a vegan diet in the future. And the first one of those is really the research on blue zones. If you look at the world, there are certain areas, there are certain places that have a higher amount or a higher percentage of centenarians per population, meaning there are more people that live beyond the age of 100. Specifically, these places are Loma Linda in California, Okinawa, Sardinia, and Costa Rica. And these places, you know, fun fact, are actually called Blue Zone because the first researcher that stumbled upon this, you know, correlation or causation on the world map was so excited that he put, that he took a blue pen and it just marked those, those areas with blue ink. That's why they're called Blue Zones. And one of these common denominators, there are multiple denominators, by the way, why these people live beyond the age of 100 or have a higher percentage of people that live beyond the age of 100, is lifestyle, specifically diet. One of the actionable advice in the book is that 95% of your food should come from plant or plant products. Other lifestyle factors that can increase your longevity seem to be family ties, active lifestyle and enough vitamin D. And shocker, none of those, you know, benefits or, you know, lifestyle factors that increase your lifespan were correlated with a meat-heavy lifestyle or a carnivore diet. So sorry, Joe Rogan. Wow. It's a, just such a strange, strange concept. Yeah. Did you see that guy accidentally hit that moose with his car? A second study worth knowing about is the China study. And this is a quite controversial study because guess what? It talks about findings that most people don't really want to know about or, you know, that are not correlated to what they think they know or is true. And the background of this study is actually super fascinating. In the 1970s, Zhu Enlai, which was then the head of China, was dying of cancer. And he decided to make a monumental, gigantic survey about this disease, which back then was not well known of. This survey then turned out to be the largest nutritional survey ever conducted with over 2,400 counties in China and over 808 million participants. And what this study found is clear. Cancer is geographically localized in China. There's some areas of China which have way more cancer than others. There's up to a 100-fold difference. And these findings are so spectacular because the sample size is gigantic of the China study and there's very little migration in China and there's a very large genetic you know, pool 
that we have there with very little differences. There's some other key takeaways of this study. Number one is that lower blood cholesterol levels are linked to lower rates of heart disease, cancer and other western diseases. Even at levels far below considered safe in the west. Second key takeaway is that animal protein was more strongly correlated with blood cholesterol levels than saturated fat and dietary cholesterol. In short, the more vegan the nutrition, the less people tend to suffer from common western diseases such as heart disease and cancer. The third study worth knowing about is the Framingham Heart Study. On March 27, 1944, President Roosevelt got admitted to the hospital. He could barely breathe and he was sweating heavily. The primary physician of the president concluded that the president was completely healthy and his blood pressure was no more than normal of a man of his age. In reality, Franklin Roosevelt, the President of the United States, had a heart failure due to untreated high blood pressure. One year later, the President died. Same in China, so in the US. Whenever the most important person of a country is dying, stuff is about to get real. Three years later, the Framingham Heart Study was created. It's a massive long-term study specifically looking at heart disease and the factors you know associated with that disease. To give you a perspective how monumental this study is, this is actually the study that created the term risk factors. Risk factors, which is now a very common term in studies, was actually first used in the Framingham Heart Study. So what did that study find? Quote, four years after the Framingham Heart Study started, Researchers had identified high cholesterol and high blood pressure levels as important factors in the development of cardiovascular disease. And again, as we've seen in the China study, there's a very clear link between animal protein intake and high blood pressure and high cholesterol. So, do vegans live longer? In theory, yes. Vegan diets provide all the necessary breeding ground and have the perfect breeding ground for a very healthy and long lifespan. In practice, this is a different kind of story though, because there are plenty of vegan junk food and it's quite easy to follow an unhealthy vegan diet. Does that mean one should not try? Hell no! One should definitely try. Following a vegan diet for longevity is like using a race car for a race. I mean, that's what it's there for. Sure, you can switch over and then go back to your normal car and then participate in that race of longevity, but why bother? Why not use the vehicle that is meant for that purpose? Yes, you should read the manual before stepping into the race car. And yes, you should probably learn from a professional. But really, there's, despite the initial learning curve, there's really no reason why you should not use a race car when you're participating in a race. So if you want to learn how to drive a vegan race car and want to read I want to reap the full benefits of this you know, race car, then you should click the link below in the description or in the first comment and schedule a free call with me. I'll be your race car instructor, meaning I'll show you exactly how you can use the race car for your specific lifestyle and how it can work for you and how you can make the vegan nutrition work for you for your specific health and fitness goals that you're aiming to reach. So I'm gonna give you exactly an expert overview over your current situation, then point you in the right direction. And if it makes sense, in the end, we can touch base and talk all about the Fit Vegan Evolution program, the program that I have. Regardless if you decide to go for my coaching program or not, these 60 minutes that we'll be spending together will be the best 60 minutes that you spend working on your health and fitness this year. So click the link below in the description or in the first comment to schedule your free call with your you know, race car instructor. <laughs> so talk to you soon or see you next time.